What's the address of the emergency? <laughs> Nine one one. I need help. I need help. My husband. Hello. Hello. Yes. I need help. I need help. My husband. My husband was shot. I need help. So a nine one one call came in uh, just around eleven o'clock on uh, New Year's Eve of two thousand eighteen, and Kamaya Hassel is the one that called the nine one one. She is the wife of Sergeant Hassel. Okay, and tell me exactly what happened. My husband brought us some food, and he left out and me and my son were eating, and I just heard gunshots. And I put my son in the room, and I came outside, and my husband was on the ground. Tyrone Hassel III, he was a sergeant in the Army. He was back on block leave from Fort Stewart in Georgia, visiting his family with his wife and his kid for the uh, Christmas leave. I was proud. He went through the rankings pretty fast. He made sergeant pretty quick, and a lot of people said it was, it was kind of hard to do. Got him. The Army is also where Sergeant Hassel found love. His wife, Kamaya, a fellow soldier. Together, they have a baby boy. Mm -hmm. All three of them are here in Benton Harbor, Michigan, celebrating the new year. My name is Sergeant Mike Lanier, St. Joe Township Police Department. Uh, December 31st, 2018, I was actually uh, on my normal patrol duties that night. I heard dispatch of a subject that had been shot. Target called in St. Joe Township for shooting. I actually broke off my traffic stop immediately and proceeded. I gotta go, okay? To uh, the address on Colfax. Your husband's outside. Okay, stay on the line with me. Ma'am, take a deep breath. How many shots did you hear, ma'am? Ma'am? Multiple officers have already been dispatched to the scene, including Officer Jeremy Peppers. My partner informed us that uh, you know, we had a, an emergency call for a shooting that had just happened. You got something else now? Yeah, shooting. Guy on the ground. Are you kidding me? Colfax. Did you see anybody around? <laughs> Ma'am? Okay. You didn't see anyone? Okay. Ma'am? Hello? Oh, Ma'am, take a deep breath with me, okay? When I arrived on scene, I arrived with numerous other officers and also an ambulance was backing into the driveway. I saw the subject, who was later identified as Sergeant Tyrone Hassel, laying on the ground next to his pickup truck with a large amount of blood, uh, with his wife uh, had grasped onto him, hysterical. I know, I know. Well, let me have it. Let me get in there, man, OK? Let us, let us get in there, hon, OK? We obtained hours and hours of police body camera footage and every officer on the scene that night had their cameras rolling and you can see it all unfolding in real time it was absolute chaos at first it, it is chaotic um but we have to control that chaos get these people back the next thing you hear is that something's gone wrong in my phone ring and it was kamaya and I couldn't really understand what she was saying. She's like, could you come home, come home? And, and I'm like, calm down, I can't hear you. What are you saying? And she was like, Ty got shot. What did he get shot at? Who is it? You know it's who he is? my son. It's Tyrone Hassel III. We were lifting the, the gurney onto the back of the ambulance. And uh, as I stepped back, she's kind of going past me and trying to climb into the ambulance. Hey, 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 back up. Whoa, 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 Because of that, I just focused on her and kind of pulled her away from that situation. Um, I think I ended up kind of uh, in the front yard. Ma'am, you got to come out here with us, okay? Kind of just standing there talking with her, and I was, at that point, you know, I was starting to investigate her. We got to figure out what happened, well, but you're going to be in the way in there, okay? So I was trying to calm her down at the same time, get as, you know, I was getting information on what happened. <laughs> Right. 
she didn't have a whole lot. She knew that he'd been at a party uh, with some family and that he was uh, bringing her some food because she had stayed home with their son at uh, Tyrone Sr.'s house there. We're just visiting. This is his dad's house. Okay. We live in Georgia. We're in the military. But she was definitely visibly upset for me to try to calm her down and get, get a good statement from her on, on what she knew. The food was outside? Like, he stepped outside to get the food? No, the food was in the house. He was leaving. Where were you at when this happened? In the living room with my son. Okay. We got to collect some evidence. I don't know what the hell's going on here, okay? My grandson is probably in there by okay. himself. Okay, we'll, we'll go, I'll go take care of that for you if he is. He's we'll get one. You in. Okay, we'll get you in there, there okay? Okay. Bye. Standing near the doorway as the drama unfolds is the couple's infant son. Let's go clear this house real quick. There, there might, yep. be a, might be a baby in there. Yeah. They're, they're shell casings, guys. Just be careful. I don't know how much he watched, but during the chaos of taking care of Sergeant Hassel and all the cops, yeah, he, he was watching it. And when you have to go take him out of there, it, it, it was difficult. OK, buddy. OK, come here, buddy. I won't hurt you, OK? I'll probably never forget that. And he was uh, probably a year and a half old at the time, you know, total innocent person there. And you have to um, go and get him out, but you also have to kick into dad mode. So he is comfortable enough to come to me so I can pick him up, take him out to his grandpa. Come on. I got you, bud. Come on. Okay. Atta boy. There you go. I think about that a lot. I, I think about the little guy, um, Tyrone Hassel IV. If he wants, he can sit in my car with him or whatever. Yeah, that, that was probably one of the most difficult parts of, of working that scene. The sergeant has a faint pulse as the ambulance heads to the hospital. Unbelievably, it's the same hospital where Ashanti Hassel, Tyrone's stepmom, is working the late shift. They um, came through the back doors of the emergency room and I seen one of our paramedics actually on top of him doing compressions. And um, they were coming toward me and I could see his, his face and um, how he was turned to the side and I could see his eyes. You knew he was gone? Yeah, I knew because um, I see it too much. Not to know, uh, Dr. Hamill walked out and he just stood there for a second. And the only thing that I heard him say was that we actually worked on him longer than we usually do, dear. And he was like, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, for a second, uh, the only thing that I could, you know, think was like, you don't know why is this happening to us? Sounds like this dude kind of, he's just home from leave for the army. Back on Colfax Avenue, investigators know it's going to be a long night. We got a guy shot in the head, um, shell cases all over the place where he was standing outside. We really don't have a whole lot to go on. It was a baffling case to start with. One of the things that struck me was Sergeant Hassel's last act was an act of kindness. He was bringing food to his wife and his child on New Year's Eve. Why did this happen? Who would have done it? With three decades of experience under his belt, Sergeant Lanier senses that the answers to those questions will not come easily. Oh, this could be a tough one to solve. Yeah, it's going to be real tough. 